The bookstore security guard caught my best friend kissing me. When I finally reached the place, I found my best friend standing there instead of Verse. It wasn't exactly disappointing, but I felt hurt that the guy I'd been chatting with over the past few months and trusted could ditch me just like that. It was embarrassing to say the least. Even then, I stood hiding and waited for Verse to pop up from somewhere. When he didn't, I contemplated leaving. But then Oliver caught sight of me and came rushing to me with a frantic wave of his hands. And I thought, with a small defeated sigh, that I didn't need to ruin the day just because of one mean move from a stranger. Oliver was my best friend, and very loud. Sam, baby! He greeted me. What are you doing here? Can you be louder? I didn't hear shit. Whatever you say, baby! He gave a loud laugh. Had I been taller, I would have clamped my hand around his mouth. God, he laughed like a hyena. You're so mean, Sam. That's why I love you. Fuck you, I replied, even though the confession warmed my heart on such a painfully gloomy day. This day sucks. Why would you say that? I knew better than to tell him the complicated truth, so I gave some sorry excuse for an answer. Everything sucks, Oliver. He ruffled my hair. Oh, is everything all right, Sam? Yeah, I replied and dragged the words. I grabbed a bunch of exotic toffees I picked up on my way here. These are sweet. Thank you, Sam. He popped a few in his mouth. You're an idiot. Those are expensive. You should have told me earlier. Where are you going? He looked behind for a few seconds and then turned to me with a sigh. I'm thinking of going back home. Why? I'd spent some $200 planning stuff for today. I wasn't going to let anything of that go to waste. $200 meant something. Let's go around, Oliver. We have to spend our time on the good things life has to offer. This was the easiest way to bring him to something that I'd spent my money on without explaining the situation. He looked at me strangely. You were sad a second ago. Well, I was diagnosed with bipolar for a reason, Oliver. He looked worried. Wait, when? I'm kidding, I replied, a little embarrassed now. Sorry. God, Sam, that isn't something you joke about. It's all right, sorry. I rushed after him and tried to catch up with his long legs. God, tall people were annoying. Oliver, let's go and eat in that shop over there. He stopped and looked at me as if I'd grown a second head. Everything's expensive there. My treat, I promised and dragged him towards the shop. Sometime later, a hundred dollars was saved. Well, not exactly saved, but by bringing Oliver to the shop, I had made sure that we properly utilized the money I'd spent on the reservation. It was only sheer luck that he wasn't aware that the shop required reservations. When it was all said and done, Oliver looked like he hadn't ever been wined and dined so well before. It was flattering to know, especially because making him happy meant something invaluable to me. We walked out of the shop and I dragged him to the nearby park. The fountain show always began at 8, and I wanted to make sure he got to witness it the way I'd planned verse to. They said it looks beautiful, I declared and clapped my hands. How do you even know of this thing? He was standing leaning against the wall as if he had no backbone. I pushed at his back and hissed at him to stand straighter. He had absolutely no care for his appearance sometimes. I am not standing straight. When you grow old and have a humpback, I'll congratulate you. He immediately straightened up. You're so cruel, Sam. All for you. I sweetly smiled at him. The fountain show began and while it was nothing extraordinary, I couldn't help but watch in amusement as Oliver stared at it in awe. He looked like one of the few people present here who truly appreciated it. I grabbed my phone from my back pocket and clicked a few pictures. I was checking out the photos when he sneaked past me and returned with a bunch of flowers in his hand. They were wet, probably because of the fountain water. For you, Sam, he said proudly, and he was loud. He must have looked a certain way because a few people around us giggled and a bunch of others clapped their hands. I flushed a shade of red and grabbed the flowers. Thanks, Ollie. Let's go now. It was so nice, he said, following after me. Did you enjoy it? I think I can come here when things seem a little rough. And what about our spot in that case? That's when things are nice. Our spot is for nice memories, Sam. He smiled down at me. Never for bad things. Sometime later, it was cold, and Oliver wanted to eat a damn ice cream. Is your head all right, Oliver? I promise it's going to be nice. He offered me another ice cream. When I didn't move to take it, he grabbed me around the shoulders and pulled me in for a mock hug. Oliver! I screeched, laughing when melted ice cream touched my face. You Neanderthal! Ugh, disgusting! You're going to hell! Please be kind to me, dear sir. He let me loose and offered his ice cream again. Please eat it, Sam. Otherwise, it'll go to waste. Why'd you even buy it? I took it nonetheless. He asked for a napkin from the shopkeeper and gently cleaned the side of my face. I always buy in two, Sam. You can't ask me to change this beautiful habit of mine. He poked my cheek with the same napkin and didn't move his hand away until I swatted him away. Have I ever told you you look pretty in purple? I looked down at my purple hoodie and then at him. By now, a flush had worked up in my cheeks, but my voice was still stable when I answered him. Nothing new, Ollie. I always look pretty. He hummed. 
Well, that you do. I didn't know what to answer and watched in silence as he struggled to throw the napkin in the dustbin. He made it look like it was an activity that required heavy work. It was both jarring and funny. When all was said and done, we decided to walk to our shared apartment. It was 20 minutes away, and the winds around us were as cold as it was several hours ago. Oliver didn't look like he minded it, but when he saw me struggling, he offered me his scarf, just as he always did. Thanks, Ollie. Although you deserve this. Because I suggested we walk after a heavy meal? Okay, cool. I rolled my eyes. You can imagine whatever you like. I'm happy. Some minutes later, he opened his mouth again, but this time he sounded like a sage. There was so much warmth in his words that I couldn't help but feel overheated in the scarf around my neck. Thanks for today, Sam, he said a little softly. I thought maybe he was sleepy. He often talked softly when he was sleepy. I was having a shit day, and you just saved my entire week. No, actually, you saved my entire month. You're so kind, Sam. You're so lovely. I blushed with each word that he said. I'm glad, Ollie. I looked at him, only now noticing the slight hobble in his steps. Are you sleepy, Ollie? I think I'm gonna die, Sam, he confessed. And not in a good way? I asked. He shook his head. Definitely not in a good way. The next morning. I had a mild cold and I hadn't received a single message from Verse, meaning I had absolutely no idea why he had ditched me the previous night. It was particularly concerning because in all these months that I'd known him, he had never left me on red. So the very thought that he ditched me on what we called a date a few times just didn't sit well with me. I could still hear Oliver snoring in his bedroom, so I sent a quick, Hey, good morning, can we talk? to Verse and hoped he'd answer soon. The story of Verse and me began several months back. Several months back, burdened with the newfound knowledge of my sexuality and realization about my less than innocent feelings for my best friend Oliver, I'd anxiously taken hold of the first anonymous dating website that I could find and hung on to the first person who looked decent. His nickname read Verse, and he informed me he lived in the same state as well. We never shared any intimate details of our addresses. We clicked, and that was the easiest way I could explain our interactions. While there were so many nuances to our conversations, the most glaring one was that we clicked. Conversations between us rarely ever seemed awkward, and it all felt natural. Natural enough that we both confessed, some two months back, why we were on the website in the first place. Verse said that he had come to a recent realization that he harbored more than friendly feelings for his best friend. He confessed that he had known of his sexuality and his weird feelings for a long time, but it was only recently that he realized he loved his best friend. But because he didn't want to do anything to harm his friendship, he had come on this dating website to seek some advice so that he could drop hints in front of his best friend. Maybe, he had said, in that way he'd find out if his best friend was into him or not. I, for my part, confessed that I felt the same for my best friend, although the realization was quite new. I didn't want to take a chance with my friendship either. What did we have in common? That our best friends and our love interests had no idea we were very gay and very much into them? This way, Verse and I started sharing advice. I'd tell him what he could do for his best friend to notice him, and he'd tell me what I could do for Oliver to finally notice me in sparkling light. Although we were both tragically failing, things looked good between us. At some point, I'd even dreamt that in this way somehow I'd get over Oliver and end up with Verse instead, your typical rom-com plot. But Verse was pretty adamant about his feelings for his best friend, and the more he was, the more I felt for Oliver. It was true, getting over my best friend would require effort. Efforts that I was sure I wasn't going to make. Months passed in these exchanges and now we'd become good friends. Yesterday we planned to meet for the first time to finally get to meet and discuss things face to face, but he ditched me, and he hadn't even left a single message to explain why. I was sure I was gonna let him know that he'd hurt me. When I least expected it, I received a message from Verse. It was simple and short, but he got the point across. Sorry, I'm sick. Oh no, I thought. Was this the reason he hadn't made it yesterday? I quickly messaged back and hoped that he'd get better soon. It was the least I could do, although I was curious to know more. Some moments later, I heard knocks on my door before the door opened to reveal my best friend in all his shirtless glory. Hi, he said. You look dead, he sniffled. I fucking feel dead, he replied. Are you sick? Just a bit of a cold. I remembered that I was feeling the same. It's all because of you. That's why I'm here to ask, would you like some soup? Coffee and then soup, I smiled at him. He sighed and nodded. Brush your teeth then, coffee and soup. You're the nicest best friend, I shouted after him. I giggled and rolled in my bed. Some time later. When I woke up next, I had several messages from Verse. All were frantic, and as I went through them, I sighed in relief. With the urgency he had been writing, I thought someone had died. But as usual, he was asking what he could do for his best friend. It was a question that was frequently discussed between us. Sometimes I'd ask it, and sometimes he would. I sighed and sleepily typed the first thing that came into my mind. Make something sweet. I think that will do the trick. I wrote and sent it before I could think twice. 
As far as Versa told me about his best friend he had a sweet tooth. Something sweet should be enough to impress someone like that. Something sweet but what? He asked back. I replied that I couldn't tell. I was sleepy and didn't have any recommendations to make. Sometimes it felt like I was his best friend with the way he asked for my opinions. But I believed he probably felt the same. Okay, I will make chocolate pie. I gave a thumbs up on the message and returned to sleep. It wasn't even an hour later when Oliver barged into my room and asked if I wanted something to eat. I just want to die. Is that available? Haha, <laughs> he replied dryly. What about chocolate pie? I furrowed my brows and peeked at him over my duvet. What the hell? Chocolate pie? Yeah, you like chocolate, right? I think I owe you one after that. Then he pointed at me with his whole hand. He meant that he wanted to apologize for getting me sick with a chocolate pie. Verse had decided on it too. What were the odds? I think that's alright. I like chocolate pie. He gave me a small salute and closed the door after himself. I wanted to return to my sleep given how weak I felt, but the coincidence didn't let me sleep. I had no reason to get suspicious, but the more I smelled chocolate in the air, the more confused I felt. I immediately picked up my phone and logged onto the dating website. Verse was not online, but even so I sent him a message. Hey, can we talk? I waited, chewed on my lip. Outside the door I could hear Oliver swearing and struggling with the oven. He often did that. I wouldn't be surprised if he returned half an hour later and begged for my help. He always did that. Not that I didn't enjoy it, but sometimes Oliver acted like a Neanderthal. Verse's reply came some 10 minutes later. Sorry bud, I'm a little busy. Confused as hell, I walked out of my room and noticed Oliver putting away his phone. The timing matched, and if my suspicions were right, then my best friend and I had a big confrontation coming up. But to make sure I wasn't just seeing things, I decided to try my luck. There was a very good chance it had all been a mere coincidence. I'd observed things like that a lot before. Like how Verse and Oliver had decided to prepare a flower bouquet at the same time, or how they'd create a silly painting for their best friends. Or the time when Verse and Oliver were reading the same book. Mere coincidences, nothing else. Right? I wanted to be right so bad that it surprised me only a little when I was proven wrong. To prove or disprove my theory about Oliver and Verse being the same person, I decided to suggest to Verse some very specific things so that he could impress his love interest, aka his best friend. These included buying his love interest a very specific brand of watercolors, a very specific chocolate, and asking him to binge watch a bunch of horror movies that I knew were brilliant. By the end of the next week, Oliver had done all of it. It was the most confused I'd ever been. As we sat down to watch the movies that I'd suggested Verse just a few days earlier, I couldn't help but pay Oliver more attention than the movie itself. And under the soft lighting of the moonlight and the bizarre colors, I noticed how handsome he was. And it wasn't my first time realization. Over the years I'd known that fact very well. But now that I knew what was going on for months, I couldn't help but look at him in a new light. The very fact that Verse and Oliver were the same person was not an off-putting thought. But it was funny to imagine that I'd been talking to my best friend all these months without knowing it was him. Oliver had shared so many emotions and secrets with me that I was sure he hadn't ever told me in person. And I had done the same. Was it because we were shit at communicating or just too afraid to lose each other? After all, it wasn't just our friendship at stake. We had confessed over the months how much we liked each other. That must account for something, right? Oliver must have noticed that I was distracted because he turned to me, took a look at my face and immediately paused the movie. Why'd you do that? I asked, trying to steer the conversation away from anything that'd give my thoughts away. I wasn't sure if I wanted to inform him about my recent discovery like that. You don't like the movie? It's nice. I'm sorry. I'm just a little distracted. He sighed and switched off the laptop. We don't have to watch the movie if you don't want to, Sam. Is there anything you want to talk about, baby? The nickname now sounded different. Oliver and I often exchanged these terms of endearment for the fun of it. We had been very single for as long as I could remember, and this meant that we shared these terms to make it sound less lonely. It started out as fun, but now I wondered if we were both guilty of enjoying it a little too much. I sighed and put my head on his shoulder. Ollie, I'm sleepy. Okay, you can sleep then. Why don't you finish the movie? I looked at him, our faces now close. I can rest on your lap. Before he could protest, I put my head on his lap and let out a long yawn. He cracked a small smile and put his hands into my hair. Okay. When I was sure he was distracted, I grabbed my phone and messaged first on the website. I noticed Oliver moving and my reply was instant. Just watching the movie, all alone, my bestie sleeping. And that was all the confirmation that I needed. A few days later. How had we been so blind? The reason I never dared to tell Oliver about being gay was because I knew I'd immediately tell him that he was the reason I realized that. Which would mean confession and a probable end to our friendship. That was the last thing I wanted. Maybe, I thought to myself, it was the same for Oliver. Maybe he feared that his confession would break our friendship. The thoughts wouldn't stop coming. My birthday was two days away and I thought it was the best time to confess the truth to Oliver. I couldn't keep him in the dark now that I knew about it. 
In the evening, I messaged Verse and asked him if he wanted to meet. He agreed at first, but when I gave him the date, my birthday, he immediately apologized and said that it was his best friend's birthday, and he was hoping to spend some time with him. While nervousness seemed to crawl up my throat, he immediately followed his previous message with, What do you think I should gift him? I have something planned, but you seem to know a lot of good stuff. What would you suggest? I'm feeling very nervous, haha. <laughs> this was real. On my birthday, I decided to stay away from my home for the time being. I knew what would happen. When Verse had asked what he could do for his best friend this birthday, I suggested he should tell him the truth. I, I did that only to make things easier for us. We had been derailing this particular conversation for months. It was time we faced it, no matter what the consequences. It was another thing I hoped that went well so that I could inform Oliver that what I felt was real. That we didn't need to struggle so much when we were already so close. And so I messaged Verse. I told him that I was at a particular spot and I wanted to meet him that very evening. His message was instant. How do you know that place? I just do, I replied. Oliver's call came soon after. He sounded worried when I finally picked up his call. Where are you, Sam? He asked. Cake's here. I'm at our spot, I replied. What are you doing there? The confusion in his voice was obvious. I wondered if he was finally coming to an understanding as well. Shouldn't you be here so that we can celebrate your birthday? I'm just happy, Ollie, I replied, and I was happy. This was the moment I was going to tell him what I felt for him, just like I did over the messages with his online pseudo verse. Can you come here? He sounded confused. Okay, Sam, I'll be there. Some 45 minutes later, he was there. When he walked up the hill with a bag in his hand, I knew he'd figured it all out. All he probably needed now was a confirmation from my side. Ollie, what's the meaning of this, Sam? He asked. I am... I started, hesitated a little, and then sighed. <sighs> the Gay King. The Gay King was my pseudo. His expression changed in an instant. I don't understand. We've been talking to each other for months, Ollie. We were confessing to each other for months without knowing it was you and me. You were Verse, and I'm the Gay King. How could we have been so blind? His breath came short. And we're here because... Because I wanted to say... I stopped and took a deep breath. Everything I said over the chat was real. I meant every confession I made, Ollie. I... I, I like you. More than like a friend. He let out a breath. Oh... This is funny. I gave a small laugh, easily agreeing with him. We are so stupid. How long have you known, Sam? For some time, I confessed. And how did you figure it out? Chocolate pie. His laugh came out in a huff. <laughs> well, that darn chocolate pie. But I am glad it happened, Ollie. I mean, I had my suspicions, but I'm glad I found out, Ollie. Well, happy birthday. He pushed the cake into my hand. Isn't it melted? It's cold, Sam. It's all right. Oliver, I said then, a little nervously. You can say it. It'll sound stupid. He was just as nervous, and I could see it. Your feelings for me are not stupid, Oliver. He swallowed, and I saw the usual confidence slipping on his face. But I talked to him over the chat, and I knew the look in his eye was shy. Maybe it wasn't all stupid. Maybe it helped us understand each other better. I like you, Sam, he said. You were my gay awakening. I gave a small laugh and hugged him. I looked up into his eyes. <laughs> Thank you for telling me, Ollie. I need to hear it. I've been going crazy over the past few days. The first kiss we shared that night was awkward as hell. We didn't know what to do with our limbs. A few days later. Slipping into this new setting was not awkward, neither for Oliver nor for me. To be very honest, throughout the years, we had already been doing things as a couple did. Was it going out for grocery shopping, or was it about cooking dinner together after a long day at work? Well, we were sure that our spring cleaning every other week meant something. In a way, Oliver and I were already in a routine. We were just too blind to actually see and accept it, and maybe a little afraid too. Whatever the reason might have been, it ended well. A few days after the confession, I dragged Oliver to our most frequented bookstore. Oliver was not a very big fan of bookstores, nor was he a reader. He read only when I insisted he read. He read the last two books only because I harangued him. If not for that, he wouldn't have touched them with a 10-foot pole. But that was one of the reasons why I always dragged him to the bookstore. It was fun to do that, and to be around him. The things I do for you, he said. Bet you secretly love it. The only good thing about the bookstores is your presence. I blushed. It wasn't like Oliver hadn't said such things before, but in recent times, and especially after the few kisses we shared here and there, each confession came with a wanton feeling. I kind of wanted to kiss him again, but we hadn't reached that stage yet. The most kisses we shared so far were either in our shared apartment or in our office washroom, but never in public. At least not yet. 
Do you think we should go out to eat after this? I like the sound of that. He hummed and followed after me like a little kid. When things felt a little overwhelming, I turned to him and asked in a small whisper, Is it true that you wet your bed that one time your mom left you? He shushed me with a small embarrassed laugh. <laughs> Shut up, Sam. I gave a loud laugh, a very rare thing. If it wasn't for the gay king, I wouldn't have found out about this. Ollie, you're a disgusting creature. You were 14 and you pissed on your- I stopped when he clamped a hand over my mouth. He didn't look offended. If anything, he looked like he found it funny and cornered me into one of the shelves. Shut up, he said. I raised an eyebrow. Do you still do it? With his hand over my mouth, the words came out more jumbled than I wanted them to, but he seemed to understand it nevertheless. Shut up, Sam, or- Or? I challenged him. His face was beetroot red. Or I will kiss you. I flustered and he dropped his hand and moved away. The silence that settled between us was so loud I was sure everyone around us would be aware. But a rare boldness overcame me when Oliver stood leaning against the shelf, his nose buried in a random book. He wasn't reading, he was just trying to read the room. We hadn't kissed outside the safety of our home. I wondered if that could change. Would you? His eyes met mine. Would I what? Would you kiss me? Now. A flush worked up to his cheeks. If you'd allow me. And, well, that was all the encouragement I needed. When we kissed, his arms snaked around my waist and mine around his shoulders. And that felt like the best thing in the whole world. At first, we were nervous, but it wasn't even five seconds into getting a little bolder that someone cleared their throat. Oliver and I jumped away from each other, our faces tomato red. Any form of intimacy is not allowed in the bookstore, the guard announced. If I see you doing it again, I will have you two removed. Oliver and I nodded with shame. When he left, we looked at each other and burst out laughing. He wrapped an arm around me and pulled me in a hug. We are not doing that again. We are doing that again, I replied. I remember you said you like PDA. Thanks for remembering. I rolled my eyes. It was a confession I had made over the chat to verse. No wonder Oliver remembered it. Before separating, he gave me a quick kiss. Books, Sam. Books, I agreed and returned to looking for them. After picking one several minutes later, I turned to him and asked if he had gone through all the messages again. Embarrassed, he muttered a soft, Shut up. You're so gentle with me, Ollie. I think I'm gonna keep you. He grinned. Thank you for the consideration, your majesty. I grinned in return. And, by the way, I have read through the messages again. Nothing embarrassing about that, Ollie. Whatever you say, baby. He replied. Conclusion. Oliver and I agreed that there was enough change after we came into a relationship. For one thing, we could kiss whenever. Not outside, though. We were still too shy about that. At some point, and before his birthday, we decided to inform our parents about our relationship. Thankfully, all four parents took the news happily. There was no tension and no messy feelings to ruin it. Maybe that meant things would work out between us. And that was all that really mattered to me when it came to Oliver. The End Have you ever witnessed best friends turning into lovers? Thanks for watching! Consider subscribing to become a part of our Rainbow Force, and stay wholesome!